So we started off with depreciation. And we said in the last class that depreciation has a positive effect on our cash flow. So this works because a company, in this case, we're losing money. We're not making any profit on the first years. So if we look here, <laughs> if we look at our operating income, when do we start to make a profit? In the fourth year. Are we paying any tax here in the third year? No. So if a company loses money, so a company loses money, it means that our expenses are going to be higher than revenues. Okay? If our expenses are higher than our revenues, our operating income is going to be negative. We're losing money, we don't pay any tax. Okay? Year four, our revenues are higher than our expenses. We start paying tax. Okay? So, if we have uh, minus 50 or minus 5,000 here, we don't pay any tax, right? But here, if we have 100 or minus 100, it's different, okay? So if we're losing money, according to tax, it doesn't matter how much we're losing. Anyway, we don't pay any tax, okay? But in this case, where we're earning money, if we have some extra expenses, we get we don't we pay less tax. We get some tax benefit. <clears throat> so this is the benefit that we get from depreciation. Okay, if we just put all the expense in the first year, in year one here, we put all our expenses for building the factory and the equipment. Anyway, it's negative. So we just have a very big negative, and we still don't pay any tax. But if we can spread out this expense of building the theme park over all these years, we can get an advantage in these years that we pay less tax. So we can get this kind of benefit from depreciation. So we said the calculation is depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. This tells us how much benefit we get each year. So we have this depreciation on each year and multiplied by the tax rate this much each year. So the higher the tax rate, the greater the benefit from depreciation. In the US they have quite a high uh, tax rate. So there's two ways we can do depreciation. There is Accelerated depreciation and straight line depreciation. I think we talked about briefly before when we talked about accounting, but let's discuss again. This is, if we drew a graph, let's say the factory, or let's say we're talking about the factory, or in this case, the theme park equipment. So the theme park equipment today is worth Two billion. Okay. How long is the, it going to last for? Do you think before we need to change the equipment in the theme park? Ten years. Ten years, right? So let's say it lasts for ten years before we change it. We have the Viking ship or the roller coaster. Okay. So straight line depreciation. It's going to go down by two billion by uh, ten percent every year. Okay. So we just figure out every year it's going to be minus 200, minus 200. Depreciation is going to be 200 every year, okay, until it gets to 10 years. Every year minus 200 million, okay. In the end it adds up to 2 billion. Can you understand the straight line depreciation? Yes. So the cost was 2 billion. But I'm going to put down every year minus 200 million. Okay? Instead of I'm at the start just 2 billion. If I don't use depreciation, I'll just expense it. Expense will be just year 0, 2 billion. Year 1, 0. Year 2, 0. Year 3, 0. 
Okay? Straight line depreciation, it's going to be zero, and then it's going to be 200, 200, 200, and so on. Okay? Every year. Now, accelerated depreciation means that it depreciates uh, less at the start and more at the end. Okay? So let's say that it's going to be 100 the first year, uh, 110 the second year, 120, and so on. So accelerated depreciation means that if we go on to the end, it's getting bigger, right? We could start with, sorry, 100, 150, 200, year 4, 250, 300, 350, 400, okay? So this is accelerated depreciation. Do you understand accelerate in English? What does accelerate mean? Do you drive? Yes. Yes? So you press the accelerator in the car. Start slowly and go more quickly. Okay? Accelerate it. <coughs> Which one is going to give us more tax benefit? Straight line or depreciated? Or accelerated? Usually accelerated, right? Because the first years, we're, not, we're making a loss. We're not making much profit. So we want to put our higher expenditure at the end. Okay? Higher expenses at the end to make more savings on tax. So if we were to draw a graph of, uh, this is straight line. If we were to change this to accelerated, depreciation, then it's going to look like this. At the start it's going down just slowly and then at the end it's going down a lot. Okay, it's a different type of line. Here we have minus 100, then minus 150, minus 200. It's starting to go down more, minus 300, minus 400, minus 500 at the end. Okay? So the numbers don't add up exactly. Okay, well I'm just giving you the idea. Accelerated depreciation, depreciation is low at the start, gets higher as it goes on. Straight line, the same every year. If we choose to just expense, we can just do it in year one, all the money. Okay? So can you understand why people use depreciation? Why do companies use depreciation? To reduce taxes. To reduce taxes, right? If we do this all in the first year, we're not going to get any tax benefit in year four or year five or year six, okay? But if we say that it didn't cost us two million this year, two billion this year, instead it cost us two hundred million every year for ten years as an expense, then we can get the tax benefit, okay? Please. Yes. Why on the slide the capital expense is depreciated more in early years? And less in later years. Uh, we can do either way. We can depreciate more in the earlier year and less in the later year. Or we can depreciate more in the earlier year and less in the later year. Right? We can do either way. But usually this way is going to be better for saving on tax. Okay? So <coughs> we uh can also do the depreciation this way, like you said on the slide. So we can do it like another way, which is that it's going to be higher depreciation at the start and then lower depreciation at the end. Okay, we can do minus 500, minus 400, minus 300, okay, minus 200, minus 100, okay. So we can also do it this way, changing around the depreciation. Okay, so we can choose which way we're going to do the depreciation. So in this question, we're going to look at this graph. Okay, let's say we can do the accelerated depreciation this way, where the depreciation is more at the start and less at the end. Okay? So in this case, the expense is depreciated more in the earlier years and less in the later years. So assume that you make a large investment this year 
and you're choosing between straight line depreciation and this accelerated depreciation, which will result in a higher net income this year. Straight line depreciation or accelerated depreciation. And which will result in higher cash flows this year. Straight line depreciation or accelerated depreciation. Okay? So discuss with your partner. Have a think about it and discuss it. Okay? So we're, in this case we'll talk about where we front load. Front load means make the depreciation more at the start and less as we go on. So for the question we're going to look at year one is 500, 400, 300, 200, 150. Okay, like this way. So this is the question. <coughs> so look at the question. Ask me if you have any question about the vocabulary. Discuss with your partner. Try to think about it and answer the question. Okay? So this can help us if we write like the income statement, we have revenues, expenses, right? The depreciation is going to be included in our expenses, so that minus depreciation will give us our income before taxes, right? So say if we have straight line, it's going to be lower. So let's say using straight line our depreciation is 20, and using accelerated our depreciation is going to be 30. Okay? So, which is going to result in higher net income this year? Straight line or accelerated? So, hands up, who thinks straight line will be higher net income this year? Who thinks accelerated will be higher net income this year? Okay, let's try and see. Minus 20 is going with straight line. The answer will be, set our income will be 100 minus 70 is going to be 30. Income before taxes, okay? With accelerated, it's going to be minus 30 for accelerated. Our income will be 20, okay? Do you understand? So, most people were correct. They said with straight line depreciation, our income will be higher. 
Okay, a straight line in this case is going to be lower than the accelerated depreciation. And we'll have 100 minus 50 minus 20 will give us 30. Income will be 30. Okay? On the other hand, 100 minus 50 minus 30, income will just be just 20. Okay? So then the second part of the question. Which will result in higher cash flows this year? Straight line depreciation or accelerated depreciation? So we said back here, we, our tax benefit is going to be depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. So our tax rate is 40% tax equals 0 0.4. So on straight line, what is our depreciation benefit going to be? For tax, what's the benefit? It's going to be, straight line is going to be 0 0.4 multiplied by 20. Accelerated is going to be 0 0.4 multiplied by 30. That's going to be our tax benefit. Okay? So, which will result in higher cash flows this year? So, who says straight line depreciation? Hands up. We'll have more cash this year if we use straight line depreciation. Who says accelerated depreciation? Hands up. We'll have more cash this year if we use accelerated depreciation. Okay, so, yeah, straight line, our tax benefit is going to be 40% of 20 is 8. Okay, and accelerated 40% of 30 is 12. Okay, so we are going to get a tax benefit of 12 for accelerated and 8 for straight line. Okay, so it means we pay less tax here, our cash flow is going to be higher. Okay, this is tax benefit. So, if we are making a profit, then we are going to be paying tax. If we are not making a profit, we are not paying tax, right? But in this case, let's say we are making a profit and we get this tax benefit, okay? So for depreciation, we need to look at what's happening with our company. Are we expecting to lose money this, in the first number of years or make profit in the first number of years, okay? So we need to figure out what is the best way to do depreciation for our company to get a tax benefit? Okay. So it depends on your on your uh, what you want. Okay. So let's uh, discuss this question. R and D. What does R and D stand for? What does R and D stand for? Research and development. Do you understand research and development? So I'm making a new drug for curing cancer. How long will it research and development take? One week? Ten years. For a drug, some research and development can take up to ten years, right? Uh, other, most companies do research and development. If you want to make shampoo, you'll do some research and development to find the best way to make the shampoo, right? So, research and development is considered an operating expense by accountants, just like depreciation. What do you think? Is research and development a capital expense or an operating expense? Why? So discuss with your partner. So we're... Uh, going back, we already studied about Accounting in the week, first week or second week. <laughs> so accountants say that R and D is an operating expense. But what do you think? Is it usually a capital expense or operating expense? Yes. Turn down the volume. Do you have a headache? <laughs> Were you drinking soju last night? <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. 
Okay, let's have a show of hands. Who thinks it's a capital expense? Hands up, normally. Who thinks it's an operating expense? So normally, do we pay with research and development? Do we pay a lot of money up front, or do we pay the money as we go on? What do you think? Up front or as we go on? Do you understand up front? Up front means at the start, before we start making profit. Right? So, just like depreci uh, depreciation, research and development usually is paid up front. Right? The reason that we are using accountants are putting R&D as an operating expense is the same as, as depreciation. The reason is to save tax. Okay? Normally, research and development cost we pay before. Right before we start selling the product and getting the revenue, normally. Okay, but even though that money is paid in a, a large amount at the start, just like buying the equipment is paying the money in a large amount at the start, companies are allowed to use accountancy to use this as an operating expense every year. Okay, so they can uh, save, get some tax benefit. Okay? Does the government want companies to do research and development? Does the government want people to just sit at home in their room playing computer games? Or does it want them to do research and development? Maybe they'll make the cure for cancer. Which does the government prefer? Which does the government prefer that people do? Research and development or nothing? Research and development of course, right? So they want to encourage companies to do research and development. So they allow research and development not to be written off, not to be just used at the start, but to be written off over a lot of periods. Okay, let's have a look at, at this. Let's say I'm a, making the drug for cancer. So the first number of years 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Say I'm a very quick researcher. I can develop the drug in, in uh, 5 years, right? So I'm a pharmaceutical company. I'm going to have a lot of expenses in these years. I have to pay the salary of the scientists, okay? I have to pay for the materials. So minus 10 million. Minus 10 million every year for research and development, okay? Then I start to make some profit here, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. Eventually I start to make profit, okay? But if I just put all of this expense here, I, I'm not getting any tax benefit. I didn't pay tax this year, I didn't pay tax any of these years, okay? So what I prefer is take all of these out of here, okay, and put it here. So 5 minus 10 is going to be minus 5. 10 minus 10 is going to be 0. So instead of paying tax this year, I paid no tax. Instead of paying tax this year, I paid no tax. Minus 10 is going to be 10. I pay less tax, so I pay less tax. Okay? Can you understand this idea? We don't, we, research and development was done here in order to develop the drug. But we didn't, we didn't pay make any profit these years, so we didn't get any tax benefit. So instead of putting our R&D here, we're going to put it here as operating expense in order to get the tax benefit. Okay, so similar to depreciation. Okay, do you have any question about R&D? What are you going to do if you're an accountant? Put your R&D as a capital expense here, or put it here as an operating expense? If you're working as an accountant, where are you going to put R&D? Capital expense up front or operating expense? Operating expense, you'll save, you'll get the tax benefit, okay? Okay, so uh, let's just check our understanding. Discuss with your partner how can depreciation and re research and development give us a tax benefit? So discuss with your partner. How does that work? 
How can we get a tax benefit from depreciation and research and development? We paid the cash up front. What can we do to get the tax benefit? Okay, so discuss the question with your partner. Explain to your partner, like you're an accountant with your customer, explaining to your customer how you're going to give them some tax benefit by using depreciation and R&D. Okay, so I should be asking and answering with your partner, okay? How can we get the tax benefit? Okay, so uh, in Taekyun, can you tell us how can we get a tax benefit from R&D and depreciation? What does that mean? We make it an operating expense, but what does that mean? Okay, when we earn money. Okay, so just capital expenditure is going to be capital expenditure is going to be a big expense in one year, right? Capital expense, just one big expenditure, two billion. Okay, operating expenditure. Do you understand operating? What does operating mean? Ongoing, ongoing, right? Continuous, day to day, that kind of meaning. Operating expenditure is going to be every year, okay? When we get the revenue, every year. Okay, so instead of doing capital expenditure, we do operating expenditure for research and development and uh, for equipment. For cash, we spend the cash here. We spend the cash here. For research and development, we spend the cash here to buy the theme park. Okay, but although we spend the cash here, you're an accountant and you advise me when I'm doing my accounts, write it as an operating expense, not a capital expense. Okay, so it gives us a tax benefit. Does anybody want to be an accountant? Do you want to be an accountant in the future? No, why not? Huh? <laughs> Accountancy is a stable job, right? Quite a stable job. Usually there's a lot of job opportunities in, in the accountancy. If you have the accountancy qualification, it's easier to go and work in another country. Like Some countries like Canada or Australia might be looking for qualified accountants. If you have the international accountancy qualification, they can give you the visa to work there, right? They're always looking. Accountancy is always in demand in uh, different countries, okay? So anyway, if you're an accountant, you'll advise your client to make operating expense for equipment and so on, okay? So, <laughs> capital expenditures are not treated as accounting expenses, but they do cause cash outflows. So here, this is not treated as a two billion expense in year zero in our accounts. But the cash does go out. Two billion goes out. I have to give the money to buy the equipment.
Okay? Even though it's not in my accounting expenses, cash is included. So capital expenditures, these big expenses in oneself, can be categorized into two groups. New capital expenditures are capital expenditures designed to create new assets and future growth, like R&D or building the team park. Maintenance capital expenditures refer to capital expenditures designed to keep existing assets. So for Disney's theme park, could you give me an example of a maintenance capital expenditure? Do you understand maintenance? What's an example of maintenance in Disney's theme park? What's an example of maintenance in the university? Hmm? The road. The road gets a hole. There's a hole in the road. We need to fix the road, right? Do the road again. That's maintenance. Okay. In Disney's theme park, what would be an example of maintenance? Hmm? Painting. Painting the machines again. Yes. Anything else? Repairing. repairing, something breaks on the machine or we need to change something, like your car. If you have a car you have to do maintenance. The tire, the tire is too thin, so I need to buy a new tire, tire. okay? So th these, we also have these kind of capital expenditures, which in accounting we can put in operating expenses over a different number of years, but in cash it's going out in the big lump sum. So, both initial and maintenance capital expenditures reduce the cash flow. So the need for maintenance and capital expenditures increases over the life of the project. So a 25 year old project will need more maintenance than a 2 year project. So on the team part, we might need a lot of maintenance on the, machi on the machines. So now here's a question if you are an accountant. The question is to use capital expenditure or not use capital expenditure. So the question is are you going to put this as a capital expenditure or are you going to, to depreciate it okay? every year? So assume that you run your own software business and that you have an expense this year of 100 million from producing and distributing promotional CDs in software magazines. Do you understand this sentence? You own a software business, you spent 100 million making uh, promotional CDs. Do you understand promotional CD? Yes. So you have some new software, you spent 100 million this year. Okay? in cash. So your accountant tells you that you can expense this item, make the capital expense for this year, or you can capitalize and depreciate it, or we can depreciate it over three years. So we can have this year 100 million, or we can have year one 33.3, year two 33.3, or year three 33.3. Okay, so these are our choices. First one, expenses. Everything is expended in this year. Okay? Second one, capitalize and depreciate. 33.3 depreciation every year. So the first question is, which will have a more positive effect on income? And the second question is, which will have a more positive effect on cash flows? So discuss with your partner and try to answer the question. You have to choose one of the two, right? Do you understand the question? Which is going to have a more positive effect on income? Which is going to have a more positive effect on cash flow? We made our income statement. We are going to have, right, this is going to be revenue. Year zero, one, two, three. Revenues and expenses. Okay, revenues, zero, fifty, 
60, 100. Okay? Just for example. So discuss and answer the question with your partner.